This is the third presentation in the series Family Search Basic Tutorials. This tutorial covers pedigree views. Check out the previous tutorials to find out about registration and settings for Family Search and how to navigate the home page. When you are ready to dive in, from the home page click Family Tree located on the left of the top menu bar. From the drop down, click Tree. This will take you to the Landscape Pedigree view. If you have already entered information in Family Search, you will see a view similar to this with you or the person designated as your starting person in the main position and your family going back. If you are a first time user of Family Search, the screen will look like this, with you in the main position. As Family Search is primarily a website for deceased individuals, you will need to build a bridge from you to your ancestors who are deceased. Your first step will be to add your father and your mother. You can do this by clicking on Add Father or Mother and filling in as much information as you know in this box that appears. First name, last name, male or female, whether deceased or living, at least the year of birth and the place of birth. You can also add the year and place of death as well, or just add the death information if you don't know the date and place of birth. Once you have filled in the information, click Next to see if Family Search already has that information in the database. In this case, the father and mother are deceased, and it looks like their information is already in Family Search. Make sure and verify that the information matches yours. Click Add Match, and this screen will appear where you can select just the individual or the couple. In this case, I want to add the couple. You will be taken to the person page. Person page will be covered in the next tutorial. This shows you as a living person with your deceased parents on the right. Click View Tree on the right of the menu to take you to the pedigree of whoever's page you are on. Click the tree on the left to return to the pedigree view and format that was last displayed. Now you should see the information about the parents in the pedigree view. Hopefully it will populate back several generations. This can be viewed by clicking the arrow after the name of your ancestor. An arrow means there is more information on that family line. By clicking the down arrow by the children, it will also show children of your ancestors. It's important to realize that this information has been put in by others and could be wrong. You will need to verify information and sources to make sure that things are correct. These strategies will be covered in a later presentation. If your parents are still living, you would need to repeat the process to get back far enough to connect with someone who is deceased. Some general navigational tools appear on the top right. The home icon returns the pedigree view to the start person, usually you if that's you who you have designated in the settings. If you get out in your tree, this helps to easily navigate back to yourself. Left clicking and dragging your mouse moves the screen around. The compass icon is a quick way to center the pedigree on the screen. The broken square icon toggles back and forth from full screen, removing the top portion of the screen. The plus and minus icons zoom in and out. The next pedigree view is the portrait view. It is accessed by the drop down box on the right and will show you your direct line ancestors and portrait photos that have been added. To see photos, be sure to check the portraits box in the options drop-down menu. 
You can also check other options in this box. You can choose to show temple ordinances needing to be completed, as well as research suggestions, record hints, and data problems. The last option on the drop down is invert colors. This can help make it easier on your eyes and is available on all pedigree view screens. We have seen the landscape and portrait pedigree views. The next view is the fan chart, my personal favorite. You can display from four to seven generations in one view. For our purposes, we are looking at six generations. There are several options in the fan chart view. Access from the options icon. The first one that you see here is family lines. Color coded blue for the paternal grandfather, green for the paternal grandmother, red for the maternal grandfather and yellow for the maternal grandmother. The next fan chart view shows the birthplace of your ancestors. Note the legend off to the left that tells you which color represents which places. Next on the fan chart view is sources. This displays by intensity of the colors, the number range of sources attached to each individual. Stories uses the same method to display how many stories are attached to each individual. As you can see, I have some work to do here. Photos displays how many photos are attached. It follows the same pattern as stories and sources. Research helps can be very useful. The color red displays data problems, such things as child born after the mother has died or a father who was too young to have children. Blue displays ancestors who have record hints that can be added, and purple gives you research suggestions such as missing a vital event or possible missing child. The last fan chart view shows the status of temple ordinances. If ordinances are available to be requested, the individual will be green, dark blue if ordinances are in progress, and amber if not currently available. The next pedigree view is the descendancy view. You could go back and select an ancestor born in the late 1700s or early 1800s. Then it allows you to track their descendants. It is a little more complex to navigate than the other views, so it will be covered in more detail in a separate presentation. First ancestor pedigree is a view which has recently been added. The first ancestor pedigree follows a family line descending from a male designated as the first ancestor. Everyone shares the same surname and has a generation number. This view is particularly helpful for entering information from Chinese and Korean genealogy books and similar records. When you first access the first ancestor pedigree, you will see a box on the left hand side that will give you a chance to see the overview. Clicking Start Overview will bring you to these four pages, shown all together for our purposes, which describe the use of the first ancestor pedigree. Checking I don't know will take you to this screen, which suggests you use another pedigree view. Should you choose to add a first ancestor, you can go back to an end of line patrilineal ancestor and designate them as first ancestor. You can then see the family line descending from that chosen ancestor. A handy feature available on this view that is not available on other views is a slide out panel that essentially shows most of the information available on the person page. If you need more information on the various pedigree views, type what are the different pedigree views in the family search into the help menu and you will get an article which will give you complete details. This concludes this presentation on pedigree views.
Good luck with your family history and thanks for watching.